Hi, everybody. Happy oh, Friday. This is ridiculous. I am so excited. We got to hit, oh, it's recording in progress. Uh, for all the people who can't make it, we promise to share the recording. Welcome, everybody. Um, I'm Dr. Rachel Rubin. I am a urologist. We are both urologists. Uh, I am a urologist and sexual medicine specialist with my partner and colleague, Dr. Katherine Kloss. Hi, everybody. Katherine Kloss. We are so thrilled. Uh, Dr. Kloss has been seeing patients all day. We have been getting ready for this very exciting webinar. Um, I am so hopeful that if you like this, um, we'll do more of this. There are so many people who registered, who signed up to join us, where I talk about this every day. Uh, we talk about we talk this about in, in all the time. Room, every day, all day. I talk about it on social media every day, all day. And yet more questions, more questions. People are hungry for this. Thousands of you signed up to listen to this webinar, to hear us talk about it more, uh, which is so extremely exciting. So we're going to kick this off actually with a poll. I want you to tell me uh, what brings you here today. Are you a provider, a clinician? Are you someone who has symptoms of what we're going to teach you about, genitourinary syndrome of menopause? You just wanted to know what genitourinary syndrome of menopause meant? Yeah. Do you just want to learn and like prepare and say like, what do I expect when I'm no longer expecting? Um, or do you, do you want to support someone in your life? Are you one of my wonderful male patients who, uh, or gosh, when I was on NPR, they just, these, all these men were sending their wives, like, uh, the article saying, Hey, you may want to hear this, which is, a uh, so exciting. So we'll let a, a few of you answer. Oh my gosh, a hundred percent of you have answered. I don't think that's ever happened in the history of the world. So I'll share this results with you. So look at that. There are many providers who are on this webinar. Um, there are many of you with these symptoms. There are probably quite a few of you who have both the symptoms and, and a your, provider. And you're a provider. And so we want to make this as um, inclusive as possible so that if you are a provider, you'll know how to start writing prescriptions. You'll know how to do this. If you are someone with these symptoms, we're going to arm you with the tools of how to show up to your doctor, where to find a clinician, um, where to uh, find a way to advocate for yourself. So just thank you for all being here today. Um, for my... Um, for my clinicians who are here, um, I need to do a big shout out for um, ISWISH. ISWISH is the International Society for the Study of Women's Sexual Health. You can go to ISWISH, I-S-S-W-S-H.org, and um, really uh, join us. This is a multidisciplinary organization that just wants to teach you how to do this, teach you how to practice sexual medicine. If you like listening to us, come to our course in October, come to our annual meeting in February um, in California, and you can be among people who will teach you how to fish, will teach you how to do this. So we're really excited for our upcoming education series. And so please uh, be involved. And if you're a person who has doctors, just tell them about this because they didn't learn this in medical school. And so if you teach them that there are organizations who can give them new information, um, they would absolutely love it. So um, Dr. Kloss, um, we're, we're going to talk about what is genitourinary symptom of menopause, why you need to know about this long before you reach menopause, because you've probably experienced symptoms. I know I have. I know when I was postpartum, what's the first thing you told me? You were like, you need to get some of this. <laughs> Dr. Glass and I have known each other for a long time. We've been through three kids, two kids. Um, and a kidney stone. I did have a kidney stone and she was my first phone call of holy, don't get kidney stone. Actually, I was breastfeeding when I had my kidney stone and I was using vaginal hormone therapy yes. at the time. It didn't cause my kidney stone though. Um, and so we're going to talk about that. When you yes. might need this therapy when you're not menopausal, what are the options? We're going to talk about four options. We even have examples and we have um, we Fun have samples toys. to show you, which is very exciting. We're going to talk about the safety. We're going to talk about how to get it inexpensively because when we got out of our training, a tube of estrogen oh cream was how much money? $1,000. Yeah. When I got out, it was about $500. Oh, she's a little, I'm a little older. She's much older than me. <laughs> um, and uh, now it's about $20 a tube. So we have seen it go from $1,000 to $500 in our lifetimes to now $20. So it is affordable. It is accessible. We also, when, when you started training, how much was Viagra? Oh my gosh, that was expensive. It was very yes, expensive. That was super expensive. And now Viagra and Cialis are like $8. A dollar. Yeah. $8 for 90 pills, yes. right? Yeah. $8 for 90 pills. So there's ways to get these things very inexpensively. So um, 
most people have never heard of genital urinary syndrome of menopause. So tell us, like, what is genital urinary syndrome of menopause? So one of the things I think it's great to point out is it's not the same for everybody. So we've got this nice laundry list that we're going to show you of all of the symptoms. One of the things that it used to be called was vaginal dryness. And thankfully, we've rebranded it as genital urinary syndrome of menopause because it's not just vaginal dryness. Vaginal dryness is a terrible way to describe this. It is associated with vaginal dryness, but it's pain, it's urinary symptoms. So women don't understand that depletion of estrogen in the vagina, in the urethra, all of these hormonally sensitive tissues can result in frequent urination, more getting up more during the night, uh, prolapse of your not only you know your uterine organs but potentially your bladder. So it it's more than painful sex and vaginal dryness. It's incontinence. It's frequency during the day. It's increase in urinary tract infections. Don't get me started. Um, going more at night, prolapse, burning, itching. What am I missing? The list no, goes I mean, on. She's I mean, exactly right. And the whole point is a little vaginal dryness. Like that term is legitimately killing women because by us calling it vaginal dryness, it's, oh, no big deal. You just use a little moisturizer, just get some lube, some KY at CVS, you'll be fine. And this is what doctors are telling women when women are dying of urinary tract infections. Those can kill you. Getting up at night to urinate over and over and over can kill you because if you don't sleep, if you fall and break a hip, like these are life threatening issues. And so in 2014, we ch they changed the name from vaginal dryness or vulvovaginal atrophy, which is a disgusting term in my opinion. And they changed it to genitourinary syndrome of menopause or GSM for short, which isn't a perfect name, but it's much but better, it's better. Yeah. much better than what we had. And so it's really important that we understand that not everyone has all the symptoms. Right. And sometimes the symptoms happen early, like Correct. in your thirties, you start, hmm, I'm, I just am getting up at night. This. or to urinate or it hurts to have sex or you know why is it why is it hurt when I'm putting a tampon in now it never hurt before I had this patient once she was like Reuben every month I get incontinence you know she was perimenopausal and she's like my incontinence worsens depending on where in the month I am because the lack of hormones in the tissue caused her to leak urine we put her on vaginal hormones she was cured so the nice part about being older is all of my friends that I share these examples so my friend I was talking to yesterday on the way home from work she's gonna hate me um gets prolapse once a month wow right That's once amazing. a month because her vaginal estrogen is low she gets prolapse and it goes away with the change in her cycle so it's fascinating and it doesn't happen. It, and the, the thing is, this, this never gets better. This is the problem. Everyone says, oh, menopause. I went through that yeah, years ago. It. I'm through it. it. I'm past menopause. This is the gift that keeps on giving, right? This tissue needs hormones to be healthy, to be strong, to fight infection. And without hormones, and once usually about average age is 52, it can start much earlier, these yeah. symptoms, but it can also start later. So it may be that the hot flashes happen at 50, but now at 65, you're noticing that you're getting up all night to urinate, or you're noticing I had a patient just this week who said, Ruben, I can't make it more than 30 minutes in a car without stopping to go use the restroom. Great grandmas. Uh, I didn't 90. have UTIs for 20 years and all, and of, a sudden, all of a sudden I'm sudden, getting recurrent UTIs. Yeah. So it's also really important that this is not, it's the symptoms, but you can actually see this with your eyeballs. Right. The problem is most doctors are not looking with their eyeballs. And so, and it's also that you're not crazy. You are not making this up. This is a biological phenomenon that is going on. With a cure, not just with like with a solution that will cure your symptoms. Like that's the part that really we need. This isn't like a, here are a few band-aids where we can, you know, uh, try to help. Like we can really fix it as urologists and we can fix this problem, which and is very cool. The nice part about being a urologist is we were trained with male and female patients and one of my favorite things that you say is if a man's penis dried up at the average age of 52. We would have a vaccine, people. It would be Pfizer created because they created Viagra. So Pfizer would make the penis vaccine. If a penis shriveled up at age 52, my favorite thing. we would have a vaccine. So so really um, at 52, every, you know, the labia minora start to shrivel up and disappear. You can see this with your eyeballs. And the next picture we're going to yes. show you is a picture. And so for anyone who is horrified yes. by the idea of seeing a vulva, check yourself because it's a body part just like your elbow. We're going to show you a couple pictures here of what the changes can look like. And I really encourage you 
to go buy that $7.99 mirror. mirror on Amazon and take a look. You look at your face every day. Okay, eyebrows are weird. They're like these hairs on top. Why do I have eyebrows? It's strange. <laughs> the vulva, the vagina, like it's not weird. It's just a body part like anything else. Supernatural. You got to look at it. Okay, yes. so go get your mirror. And these are the kinds of things that we are going to see. So you can start to see a prominence of the urethra. And the not all of it looks alike. All of it looks different. All different. And but all of these things examples. are vulvas and vaginas. Yeah. And so here we go. A perfect example. Labia majora is health, healthy looking. The labia majora are full. Not everybody has that. But the opening, this is called the vulvar vestibule, is red. It's irritated. It's the raw. Urethra. It, this is bladder oh. tissue, right? Which is very interesting. The vagina here, right? This is a little bit of prolapse of the vagina. Here is very severe genitourinary syndrome of menopause. If this woman wanted to have penetrative intercourse where would a penis even go or a device where would the speculum even go so and her labia have fused that's a good one to point has out there no labia minora here they're completely missing here what is this called oh urethral prolapse so the urethra can start to protrude and that is a hormonal change. The other thing we see is you lose the wrinkles, which we call rugae, you lose the wrinkles in the vagina. And so the vagina thins out. So it is not stretchy. The vagina is supposed to be stretchy and pliable. A, a baby's head can fit through and there. And it expands during intercourse. And it expands during intercourse. And without that, it is thin, it is raw, it is irritated. So it cracks, it bleeds, it is so uncomfortable. It hurts. It hurts. Oh my gosh, yeah. it hurts. And so um, we're going to go through the changes in just a second. But one thing that we check often is a pH in our office. Yeah. We have this amazing pH paper that actually checks. And um, you can see here that here the, the pH is, it goes from four and a half, which is good. That's acidic to seven and a half, which is uh, more alkaline. So I had a patient just yesterday and the last time she saw me, it was 7.5 and she was having horrible symptoms, frequency, urgency, leakage, pain with sex, urinary tract infections. We started her on vaginal hormones and she came back yesterday, so three months, and it was now 4.5. And guess what? All of her symptoms were gone. Shocking. Her frequency, her urgency, her leakage. She was not having pain with sex. And she, she didn't get breast cancer. She was tearful. <laughs> she was tearful in my office and said, oh my God, like I didn't do very much for her. So the next piece of this is we're going to show you what does this actually look like to do treatment? And so don't worry, we're not going to show you on each other. <laughs> we promise not to. So we, we, let's talk the cheapest. So, so what do yeah. you tell patients? How do you counsel patients? So on this unfortunately, option? part of this is the insurance game and the cheapest option that we have right now is vaginal estrogen cream. It works. It's great. It is a bioidentical hormone. So it is the same as the estrogen you're producing in your body. Do we have one of the two? We don't have okay. the cream. We don't we have, have the samples tube. of everything else. The, it, so it works really well, but let's be real. It is messy. Like it, you really there either are some, there have are some to, workarounds. yes, I was gonna say, you really either have to rub it in. Well, that's the workaround that works well. Um, otherwise yeah, I would say the main complaint is it's goopy and it's kind of yucky than the next day. But again, this is the cheapest option. This will fix your tissues. So if this works, you know, this is a great place to start. And I completely agree with everything Dr. Kloss is saying. And so we can get a $20 tube of this stuff. You got, you need a prescription. This is what your doctor would write on their prescription yeah. pad. And you're going to do this forever, right? These treatments are forever. And so- This what, doesn't go away. It never goes away, right? You're going to wear your seatbelt forever. You're going to, um, you know- Brush moisture, your teeth moisturize forever. Moisturize your face forever. You're going to use vaginal hormones forever. But you only need to do it twice a week. Often we'll tell people to start every day for two weeks. You don't have to do that, but it, it can help. And so it comes with an applicator and you can screw the applicator on, squeeze it to one gram and then plunge the applicator into the vagina. If you really want, um, you can put it on your finger like you would toothpaste on your finger and you can That's rub it in, rub it in just like you rub sunscreen in your face so that it absorbs. You definitely can do that. You can put some on the urethra. You can put some at the opening. Here is my biggest pet peeve for all of you doctors listening. I was going to say, but screenshot this if you're wanting some therapy because this will be the easiest for your doctor to get through. Agree. Okay. And often your insurance will yes, cover insurance it. Yes, insurance-wise. Yeah. Oftentimes insurance will cover it. But here's the deal. My biggest pet fee pee for all oh. you doctors listening <laughs> is it's not just a little pea size that you put at the opening. 
you need at least a half a gram to a gram. I like a gram that you have to get in the vaginal canal. You have to push it into the vagina and good on the walls. You need that pH to go to four and a half. That's what's going to prevent UTIs. That's what's going to fix the symptoms. Too often women will say, oh, I tried and failed vaginal hormones. You can't fail. You can't fail. You may need a different modality. The, Correct. Cre the cream may not work for you. You may need a different, which we're going to show you the different things. But the reason this works vaginally for UTIs is a, is a few fold. And I think we quick touch on that because we are urologists, but it acidifies, hence our back to our pH paper, acidifies the vagina, which is essentially the appropriate environment for the good bacteria in the vagina. Urinary tract infections come from fecal bacteria. No, it has nothing to do with how cleanly you are. And I'll keep this short, but then they move into the vaginal canal. They reside there. But if the vagina is taken up by good bacteria, which are fueled by estrogen and an acidic environment, then they don't have anywhere to go. So there's less likelihood of them then colonizing and moving into the urethra. So it works in that regard. It provides the acidic environment and it provides food for the good lactobacillus, which is the good microbiota of the vagina. So- I plug that in there. It's exactly, it's amazing, right? So it is so important. The microbiome of the vagina actually fuels the microbiome of the bladder and the urethra, and that must be healthy to prevent infection. And there is no probiotic on earth that you That's can gonna buy get that is going to do that. There's no data to prove it. So don't spend your money, spend your money on vaginal hormones and then education on this information because you need good education. And so you can get a tube of this cream for $20, either on GoodRx, so your doctor writes a prescription, you go to your local pharmacy. If your insurance doesn't cover it, you go to goodrx.com, get a coupon, or they send the prescription to costplusdrugs.com. We'll talk about it later, but Mark Cuban's pharmacy, $20, they'll mail it to your house, and it lasts for about two and a half months. So you're talking less than $10 a month to prevent urinary tract infections, which can kill you. That's, and that's pretty good. That is great. I love that. That's pretty good. Okay. All right. Let's talk about the other so side. Creams are messy. Yes. I hate creams. I, don't I, like, um, I, I just yuck. icky. So what's the next option? So um, talk to Twofold. me, talk to me about the, these, this option. So same thing, just in a different, different delivery system. Okay. So tablet with an applicator versus that's a so that's a brand that's a brand, a tablet, that's a brand but, name. It's an yes. insert. It's called Invexi. Rhymes with I'm sexy. Invexi rhymes with I'm sexy. As if you've done this. It before. doesn't have an applicator. It's no. a cute little pearl. Your applicator is your finger. And sometimes your insurance covers it. Great. Don't yes. spend a million dollars because um again you there is get, our generic there, version. There are generic options. So this is I just opened it. This is the applicator. So like a tampon, you put it in, in and it. then. Oh, that one went really far. It just like <laughs> popped across the room. Oh, no, we need another one. So it looks like a little tablet. It it's there on the screen. It looks like a little tablet. Okay. So it's actually not messy. It's not goofy. Mm -hmm. It's a little pill. Sophie, go get that for me. Is it a, Sophie's here Isn't helping us. Yeah, <laughs> She's making sure we're not going to screw anything up, but we probably will. It's okay if you can't find it. So it's a little pill that you put in. Oh, and here we go. The Got same, it. Oh, it's tiny. It's Show like it. a birth control pill. It, it is uber, the... uber, 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 uber little. If that touches a penis, it cannot hurt a penis, just so you know. It, it, it like the cream cannot hurt it either. No, that's a great that's point. A, that like, is a good point. That is a common ass question. partner with this therapy. Right. Um, so this little insert, you put it in and this pill dissolves while you're sleeping, which is lovely. It's and amazing. So it, the thing is, it does not work. It, this is This takes two to three months to work. So so every night for two weeks and then twice a week forever, you put this tiny little pill. It's tiny. I know it's tiny. It is so tiny. And not only is it tiny in size, the dose is minuscule. Right. Ten Does micrograms. it get absorbed in your body, Dr. So Rubin? There is no increase in your blood levels of estrogen with this tiny. How do you know that? Because there's lots of studies and data to show that. And so 10 micrograms, I want you to know 10 micrograms is minuscule twice a week. So that's 20 micrograms a week. Now, if I give an oral estrogen- I was gonna say, let's talk about estrogen level really quick. What okay, does that okay. mean? So, so estrogen, if I draw your blood, so if I draw my mother's blood, for example, her estrogen level is zero essentially, yeah. right? If I draw my blood or yeah. your blood, it's probably your estrogen levels probably between 200, 50 yeah, and 150. Yeah. 50, 200, yeah. 50 at its low. Depending on your cycle. On where you are in your cycle. When you were pregnant, right. how oh, high was your estrogen? 3,000, girl. About 3,000, yeah. right? 
So, so when you use and what this, about Grace and Billy? They're five. Oh yeah, we have two little daughters. Um, they're zero, right? Well, they're no, estrogen. they're like is it? No, it's not zero. Teach me. What? I'll teach you. It's like five to ten. They're higher than postmenopausal. Oh my gosh, my little girl's bones. That's so good for her bones. Um, see, I'm always learning. Um, so this ten microgram insert does not increase your blood level. So if your blood levels are 150, they stay 150. If a man were to take this, uh, which he does not need to, um, his blood levels are 25. They stay 25. And so when you use this, if your blood levels are zero, like you are in menopause, they stay zero. And so when we give whole body hormones and we do, we, we yeah. love giving whole body hormones when it is evidence-based and safe. And we love talking about that though. Maybe one day, if you like this, we'll come back and talk about that some more. Um, but, but, um, but these are good options. Right. Well, so, so, so this doesn't change doesn't your, your, change your, your hormone. blood That's a good levels point. Yes. of hormones, which is what I'm trying to say. And we give high doses of whole body hormones. 10 micrograms is a tiny, 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 tiny dose. dose. So this is the inserts that you can use. Um, people really like this for most people. They this do. is completely this is great. good, adequate. This is my favorite go-to. It's Same. not messy. It's not goopy. It's, cheap. it's often covered by insurance. Yep. Um, in America, because I know there's a lot of people. We have like we have a lot. How of, many people? Yeah. Like we had thousands of people signed up for this thing, and it's amazing how many people are going to watch this. But this is a really, really nice option to use. Now, it doesn't mean it works for everybody. It doesn't Very mean true. it's the only option. And so, if you've used this and you say, "Ruben, this doesn't work," it doesn't work. Sometimes doesn't, you need, don't give up. Sometimes you need yeah. to see someone like Dr. Kloss who can like who can really try to. Why isn't this working? Is it? Do we need to add? Do we need to change yeah. modalities? Is the pelvic floor floor having troubles and shout out to all our pelvic floor physical therapists huge listening. amazing you are the unsung we are yeah you're the reason we're our, here of our world we thank you okay so let's keep let's moving another yes. option we're going to keep moving so dr Ruben, what is this so this is a vaginal ring this vaginal ring you set it and forget it um you put it in for three months at a time like a tampon you don't feel it so if you put this ring in your body does not feel it can you have sex with it in i would say most of my patients do um they i would say 95 percent of my patients their partners don't notice it. If you're bothered by it, you just take it out and pop it back in. Um, it's a really lovely option. I have a lot of really good stories about patients who have had been in nursing homes, who've had dementia, who've got really poor dexterity of their hands. They can't put something inside twice a week. This is a lovely no, option. Oh, sorry. This is a lovely option. It can get expensive. Yeah. Um, what, what's, your, what's your experience no, with insurance I, coverage? I would agree. I love this for the set it and forget it. Um, it's not messy. It is easy to use. It is not well covered by insurance. There are coupon cards that you can use um, and you but can do expensive. prior. Your doctors often have to fight with your insurance companies. I will say, uh, depending on when you're watching this uh, right now, this is a generic product officially. The patent ended, but I don't know of any generics there, yet, yeah. but I'm yeah. very hopeful that that will get cheaper over time. It's really lovely. Um, um, so the, this fun. product is one of my favorites. And the reason we don't just say vaginal estrogen, but we call it vaginal hormones is because this FDA approved product, which is called Intra Rosa, is not estrogen. It's DHEA. Okay. DHEA is the precursor to both estrogen to and, and testosterone. And, and did you know the urethra and the bladder and the vagina and the vulva need not just estrogen, but testosterone as well. Oh my Mind God. Mind-blowing. Like we're having trouble even getting people to understand that women need estrogen. Right. And then you add testosterone and people's brains literally explode. Especially vaginally. Explode. Right? Explode. Explode. It, so there are tons of receptors of testosterone all throughout the bladder, the urethra, the vulva, the vagina. Women make more testosterone. Right yes. now. Right now, do you have more estrogen in your body or testosterone? I have more testosterone. She has more androgens in her body. I have more androgens in my body than I do estrogen. Right. And so we have to get more comfortable that this is not a binary girls have estrogen and boys have testosterone. Men have estrogen, men have testosterone. So do, yeah. so do women. So we, we must understand that that's really important. So sometimes when you fail vaginal estrogen, all it means, and it could, there could be a variety of reasons, but one of them could be that you need more than just estrogen. So you need estrogen and testosterone. This is one of the ways to make it happen. Um, it's a great product. 
And it is, it's something you use nightly again. So that's important. It's a nightly product, whereas the vaginal estrogen products tend to be twice a week, we recommend. Yeah. The vaginal DHA is meant to be every day. And what's cool, it also so, comes in an applicator. Oh, I just our... destroyed the applicator. All right. So this one, I don't think I can get across the room for this one. But no. if you see, there's an applicator here. here. Now, it's not great for the environment because it does come with individual applicators, just like the estrogen inserts. And so, um, but basically you plunge it in. Oops, I didn't go that far. And it's a... It's a, a suppository that has palm oil and DHEA. It's two ingredients. Two ingredients, That's yes. That's it, which is so fabulous. I did have one person with a tree nut from allergy. Yams. Oh. I had a woman who did it was alert, but I've never seen too many side effects from this thing, but she was allergic to the, the palm oil that was in it. I've actually like, never had an, one an allergic it was reaction. One time I had a patient. So it is really actually very moisturizing. A lot of people will tell you use coconut oil for lubricant, mm -hmm. which we love. Yeah. And this is similar because it's palm oil. And so as it melts in the body, you find it's very moisturizing lubricant and it really pretty reabsorbs. Um, and so it's not too messy. Occasionally people will yeah. have some discharge with it. I've used it. I've used it's it fine. too. It's really, it's actually. <laughs> Actually, yeah. it's quite lovely. Uh, it, is. it is not always the most affordable option. So often your doctor, your, your doctor has to fight. And my goodness, Sophie in our office is fighting every day with insurance companies saying she tried the vaginal estrogen. She, she tried, tried the, the cream. cream. It's yes. not, it's not, it's not enough. enough. <laughs> and we have data to <laughs> show working. that switching to a DHEA can be helpful. Now I yeah. love most people do fine on the estrogen. So it's not saying everyone needs DHEA and certainly you don't necessarily have to pay for it. Um, but it's an option, but it's an option to option, think yes. about and you can get, especially it, if you've tried something else already. It, it, a hundred percent. And especially, so you can get it for $85 cash a month at Costco. So Costco for the win, um, but that's still pretty it's still expensive. Crazy expensive. Right now. It's, it's awful. Um, and we actually have data, which I think is in the slide deck that is showing a decrease in urinary tract infections by more than half, both with estrogen and with, with the uses of this, which is so exciting. So what about right, safety, doctor? Four minutes. Okay. Well, we're going to, we're going to go a little longer, but we won't go too much longer. We're going to keep, <laughs> we like, we didn't plan, we didn't practice this y'all. And um, Dr. Klaus and I have been friends for an enormous amount Long of time. time. And so um, it's really hard to get us to stop talking about this. So what about safety? Okay, Dr. Klaus, I'm here. You're my urologist. Yes. You're, you're actually my urologist. I called you when I had a kidney stone. I'm having frequency. I'm having urgency, but I'm terrified of breast cancer. Um, I, um, I, you know, um, oh, is this, this is, um, this is UTIs. No, cool. this is UTIs. There's <laughs> breast cancer. We're going to go back. I'm terrified of breast cancer. I have a family history of breast cancer. Um, maybe I've had a personal history of breast cancer. How counsel? Like, what do you tell patients in terms of a uh, breast cancer risk? So great questions. And the short version is there is not an increased risk of breast cancer or any cancer with the use of vaginal estrogen. And it's thankfully we have, I was gonna say, thankfully we have excellent data. So we're not just here, to, you know, spewing this at you because this is what we believe. We have excellent data to show um, with follow-up studies, this one we have referenced here and with absorption studies, I don't think we have that slide on there, um, that there is not systemic absorption of vaginal estrogen, nor is there any evidence to show that it is associated with an increased risk of breast cancer. So what I'll tell you as well, and I they're going to say, but why, when I get it, well, we're at okay. actually a whole, that's like an hour. It's another long one. No, we have but to I talk do, we about it. We have, to we have to talk quickly. about it. We absolutely have to talk about it. And so um, here's the thing is the only, there is nobody, no great grandma, grandma, aunt, transgender man. There's nobody who is contraindicated who absolutely cannot, cannot. use this. Family history of breast cancer, personal history of breast cancer, um, blood clot history. Everybody can safely use vaginal hormones. Now, what I will say is is the only patient that is giving the medical community pause is a patient who is active actively on, not even just yeah. active breast cancer, but on aromatase inhibitors specifically, not even tamoxifen, actively on an aromatase inhibitor. We're going to want to have a conversation. And my question is often, because there's not robust data to show harm, there's no data to show increased risk, risk. of mortality, mm -hmm. but there's, 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 pause among the oncology community. So we'll put that aside. But my question back to the oncology community, as well as to the patients is, can we afford not to use vaginal hormones? Can we afford to have urinary tract infections? And we'll go back can we to afford yeah. to have, you know, and so, so, so talk to me, is, is it really, let me see if I can go back here. Hopefully. Does it really help urinary tract infections? Yes, it does. 
Um, I don't know what study you have up here, but it it increase, decreases your, I'm going to talk, just pretend I'm going to talk to a patient. It decreases your incidence by almost 50%. More so, than sometimes, more um, than 50%. It can, I, I usually tell patients 50% because I think you're going to um, really see that. I put all of my pre-menopausal, post-menopausal patients who have recurrent urinary tract infections on vaginal estrogen. I mean, not all, but a majority of them um, based on this literature and based on the translational science that we have about um, what estrogen does. So again, I talked a lot about the vaginal changes in the vaginal microbiome, which are so beneficial, but what estrogen also does is in the, in the reproductive age woman, the layer of epithelial cells, which is kind of like your initial layer of vaginal cells is about six or seven plus plus or minus, um, cells deep in, and those cells are thick, they're thick, they're healthy. And then when you have a deprivation of estrogen or testosterone in that area, the number of cells decreases dramatically to one or two. That's where you get this thinning of the rugae. And it also those cell layers really decrease. So this is part of the reason that it also helps with pain, discomfort, not tearing, no blood, no fissures is because we're actually building up this tissue, um, which is wonderful. I went on a total tangent, oh, but I love it so much. It is just like incredible. Great. So not only are we decreasing urinary tract infections by more than half with vaginal estrogen, yes. but we show the same thing. And this is a data that we're about to publish with the vaginal DHEA, with the, with, with the, our the uh, intra -rosa, rosa. this one, yeah, here we show you. Um, so um, we're preventing urinary tract infections. There is no risk of, of cancer. There's no harm. There's no risk of blood clots. And yet there is a box. Okay. That's what we have to talk we about. We got to talk about the because box. Because you get your prescription for our, let's say we go to the tab, estradiol. What you pick this up, the pharmacy, the pharmacist gives it to you. What does it say on the box? Y'all, this is so crazy. And this is actually where I need all of you to get mad and get loud. So on the box of vaginal hormones. Vaginal. So we're talking just vaginal, local, right? Dr. Ruin. Doesn't increase your, your, your blood levels of estrogen. It had nothing to do with hot flashes, night sweats, systemic hormone therapy. And yet the box says that it causes stroke blood clots, and? dementia, you need to use progesterone, cancer of every kind. Uh, it is it is literally a box that has a warning label where 0% of the information is true. And so we are going to, like, we're going to work with um, a uh, Let's Talk Menopause, which is a great nonprofit. And we will be marching at the FDA and marching on Washington and screaming because it's actually killing women. We're killing women by putting harmful labels on boxes. Cause you go to your doctor and the doctor says, Hey, this, you know, we had this great conversation. You told me this was fine, but and the then they FDA, go home and they read the yeah. box and they say, what Dr. Rubin didn't tell me. It says it literally right here. She, Dr. Rubin didn't tell me that I needed progesterone. By the way, you don't need progesterone with it. We'll talk about it in a second. Dr. Rubin didn't tell me this was called a pulmonary embolism. I don't, I don't want to have that. No. So we're killing women by trying, by putting false labeling to try to protect them, which is actually killing them. There you go. That's America in 2023. So we have to change the labeling. We have to understand that a birth control pill or a hormone therapy by mouth is unbelievably different with different risks. It, it, it's not even the same medicine as a local vaginal, vaginal hormone. hormone. Yeah. I love that. So, okay. Great. I'm enraged uh, as you should be too. And on a Friday afternoon, you probably have 27,000 more questions. We're going to get through a few of them. If you follow us on social media and right now we're at Dr. Rachel Rubin. Um, we talk about this all day, every day. We've got blog posts on our website, rachelrubinmd.com. And you can give this information to your doctor and say, Hey, can you watch this now? 30, three minute video, uh, a video of explaining how to do this. Cause I think this doctor, these doctors are onto something. May not be crazy. So, so how do you find a doctor in your right. area? So this you is can't great. Come to Washington DC yeah. uh, uh, and see us. How do you, how do you find help? How do you advocate for yourself? Well, well, with these two wonderful websites, one that you referenced at the beginning, ishwish.org and menopause.org. Yeah. So you can, each of these things have find a provider, you can find this in your area. You, yeah. And, and hopefully you can find someone who you will help you advocate. So where can I get these hormones? Talk to your doctor. You need a prescription, which the, earlier we went over the exact prescription. What? Screenshot it. Right. Yes. Screenshot Agreed. it, bring it to your doctor. And you may have to use a good RX coupon, which for all prescription, my, my, my husband just paid full price mm. for a prescription that would have cost us 
was $75 would have costed us $23 with a coupon. And I was not happy. I said, do you know what good RX what is? Good? And he did. And, and it's not even at home. So you got to teach people about these cost savings. Um, everyone go to costplusdrugs.com. If you're on blood pressure medicine, diabetes great, medicine, yep. cancer medicines, the cash price outside of insurance, your doctor sends a prescription to costplusdrugs.com. They mail it to your house. Y'all, you can get 90 pills of Viagra for like six bucks on this website. So really um, lots of different medications. It's been really, really great. And then the the E string, which can get expensive in the intro rosa, there are coupon cards from the company and work with your doctor to get those prior authorizations going. So let's run through real yes. quick. This is going to be like, like speed Lightning, dating, speed dating, Lightning, yes. speed dating. Great. All right. I'm going to ask doctor, we're going to go back and forth. Yes. So can premenopausal women use uh, uh, products for menopausal atrophy and genital urinary syndrome of menopause? 100%. And as we've talked, we're not going to go wildly into this, but we both used it. There are different indications. So we can 100% use it. Talk to your doctor about what your symptoms are. And hopefully that can get you on the right track. Okay. The answer is we give birth control pills also, which are super high doses of hormones. A local hormone is not going to hurt anybody. So it's not going to hurt you. And the AUA, our urology, they, do. Um, they recommend if you have recurrent UTIs, yes. you should 100% be on one of these products. I love to tell people that um, vaginal estrogen was my gateway drug into hormones because thankfully the American Urological Association think a while ago started to support vaginal it estrogen is use for recurrent based UPIs. For, per, for perimenopause. Okay. okay. Do I need progesterone with this? Very good question. You do not need, so do progesterone, that. it says it on the box. You need progesterone with it. You do not. When you take high levels of estrogen throughout your body, so for hot flashes, night switch, which we love giving to people, you should not suffer with those things and join us. Uh, we, we do group menopause visits. We do individual visits. We can talk about menopause all day mm-hmm. long. But when you do high doses of estrogen and you have a uterus, you need to protect it with progesterone. Otherwise, estrogen can give you uterine cancer. And so anytime you're on a high dose estrogen and you have a uterus, you need progesterone. But remember, this doesn't this increase not. your blood levels of estrogen. So you do not need progesterone with these products. Um, but but what if I use this and I start, I haven't had bleeding, bleeding in five years. What if I have bleeding? What do I do? So actually bleeding within the first six months of even systemic hormone therapy can be normal. So- can be can be, but you always want to talk to your doctor who prescribed it to you and say, Hey, listen, I've had bleeding easy to stop the medication. This is not a, you know, once you start it, there's no ill effects of stopping it. Always follow up with your doctor, but there is, you know, very expected potential, not expected, but it can happen. Anytime you bleed and you're not supposed to be bleeding, it's pretty good advice to talk to a doctor, but it's not something to like, don't panic panic about, don't panic about it. Go to a doctor, go to a doctor. This doesn't increase the risk of uterine cancer. It doesn't increase the risk of something horrible. If you bleed, don't assume you're going to die tomorrow because you're not. But sometimes if you bleed, your body is trying to tell the world something. Sometimes you get an ultrasound. Sometimes there there's other things. Fibroids can bleed and polyps can bleed. I had polyps uh, at one point, right? Like things can bleed things, yeah. that have nothing to do with the vaginal estrogen. But when can I stop? I, Dr. Kloss, I've been using this for three years. I haven't had a UTI in three years. I now can sit and wear pants right. and play Mahjong with my friends. I don't actually know how to play Mahjong. Um, when can I stop this thing? I'm tired of taking medications. I'm natural. I don't want to take I love medication. A, I love a natural woman. Um, well, anytime you want to have the symptoms come back. Oh, that's a really good advice. <laughs> because anytime you stop this, they will come back. This is unfortunately not a, you know, a, we're both surgeons. This is not a surgical thing where we cut one and done. This is, a, this is a lifelong therapy. You, you know, not everybody color your hair. There I are a lot of things I do. There's a lot of, not recently. There's a lot of things you do for maintenance. This is just one of them. Keep doing it. It's for your health. It's going to save you that. But I fracture. read on the interwebs that there is a laser that can blaze my vagina into perfection and rejuvenate me forever. Uh, tell me, can I just, do, can I just spend thousands of dollars on a laser? You can spend thousands of dollars on a laser for sure. But also use vaginal hormones. <laughs> I was going to say, if you, you're not going to. So we, we, again, there is data to show lasers could help a little. There's no data to show lasers prevent UTIs. No, right? That's that where is I, correct. Yes. There, you, know, you resurface your face, you yeah. can resurface your vagina and it may it, help with lubrication. Traditional medicine, yeah. It could help, but it is not going to prevent it's not gonna the change UTIs. UTIs. It's not going to change your pH. It's not so going to change your microbiome. If yeah. you're going to spend thousands of dollars on lasers, 
do it Spend with on well, e-string or estrogen uh, do it with vaginal hormones right yeah. synergy like don't do it instead of and don't let any provider tell you that oh just do the laser because hormones are dangerous hormones are not dangerous you can use hormones um so so what's the next one what are the what are side you, effects oh um well i think we talked about the side effects of the goop yes yeah, so it's messy discharge yeah. you could get you a yeast could- infection that is true. And so what happens, Dr. Rubin, if you get okay, a yeast so infection? Okay, so here's take on yeast infections. When you're starting these therapies, your pH is 7.5, and we've got to change your microbiome completely to acidify it to four and a half. Now that takes two and a half months to really maximally work, two to three months to maximally work. So as we're acidifying the tissue, sometimes yeast can start to pop up because yeast tends to like more Grow acidic, acidic environments. Acidic environments. Yes. Acidic environments. Yes. And so what I tell people, stay the course. Don't stop your vaginal hormones. Go to your doctor, get treated for your yeast infection, right? So often we do pills. Um, I don't love the creams for yeast infections because they can kind of irritate the vulva. So treat your yeast infection and it will, after two to three months of maximizing your, your microbiome, it shouldn't, it shouldn't come back. I don't, we don't actually have patients. You've been with no. me what, since March? Yeah. We've been working together since, you know, she joined our practice, which I'm the luckiest person in the world that I get to work with this human, that, that, that we don't have patients who come in constantly with chronic yeast issues. No. They it can happen, but it's yeah. not. No. Okay. So, but what if, what if, when okay, this is, symptoms. Yeah. this is, what if I still have symptoms? So I've done my vaginal estrogen for four months and I've been, I, I'm not stopping, but I still have some pain with sitting. I still have frequency and urgency. I still have pain with sex. Um, besides going back and talking to my doctor or seeing a specialist, what other kind of a, a person should I see? Oh, should we see a pelvic floor physical therapist? Tell me more of who, so what these that is. Amazing individuals um, are so much more talented and smart than I am. And I me too, am me too. happy to um, say that I work in the same field as they are. So these are physical therapists that are specialized in the pelvic floor. All right. Very few people know anything about the pelvic floor. Um, these men and women know more about the pelvic floor structure um, from a nerve, muscle, and bone standpoint than I think almost anyone. Not only do they know that, but they know how it relates to other areas of your body. Frequently, your pelvic floor um, takes up, you know, for weaknesses in other areas, and that results in increased tone in the pelvic floor muscles. So. Unlike other muscles in your body, if you think biceps, triceps, when you're contracting one, you're relaxing one. The pelvic floor musculature does not have that um, that component where there's um, a, a muscular component to relax. So it's not intuitive to know how to either know what your pelvic floor is, assess it yourself, or work on how to improve it. So seeing a pelvic floor physical therapist is unreal for a variety of things, urinary, pain sex, all of the things. And I'm sure a million more than I'm missing. What she said with a thousand exclamation points on top. And it's also, uh, if you men with pelvic pain, men with incontinence, men with these issues also benefit. So everyone has a pelvis, everyone needs pelvic floor physical therapy. Um, so a final question is, Great one. Um, I'm on Can a patch you, yeah. for my hot flashes and yet I still have frequency and urgency of urination. What do I do, Dr. Kloss? You start vaginal estrogen. So unfortunately, systemic hormones are great, but they don't typically treat genital urinary syndrome of menopause. So yes, it means dual therapy, but you've got to fill the receptors within your body. And then you really have to treat the tissue locally. And that's with all of these lovely things that we And it have. doesn't add any risk, right? You're not adding any problems, any risk. There is one product actually, which is going a little bit over, which is a different kind of ring. Somewhere. I had it somewhere, but it, it's a ring. It's called a femring that is local, gives you a treatment for genital urinary syndrome of menopause, and it helps with your hot flashes. It's called a femring, um, but you need progesterone if you have a uterus. So it's a higher dose uh, uh, product, but it does two things. So it's one of those products. It's a two for one kind of a thing, which is very nice. There is a company who's researching a ring that has both estrogen and progesterone in it. I was like, by the time I get to perimenopause, I must, that ring must, must be, be ready. It must be FDA approved by the time I get there. That's my, my dream. So if okay. you all, okay. So, so it is, we're we, well over our time. We so are we're, sorry. We yes. spent 15 minutes over. If you actually, we're going to do real quick for those of you who are brave enough to still be here. Um, what else can we do to help? Um, do you want us to do YouTube video? I want to do a YouTube channel with this human. Do you want us to do podcasts? Do you want us to do more doctor education? All of the above. Uh, tell us how we can help. Um, if you want us to be your 
doctor or at least give you advice on what you should do with your body, um, it's hard. It's difficult to, to, to have, uh, there are a billion people going into menopause. Uh, and so we, we can't- And it's not like a one- it's this not a one everyone. year period. This is not only you, yeah. like all, everyone, all of your friends need this, but so we're getting people together in community. Uh, we have our next one, October 13th, where it's basically three hours of this, us doing this, where we talk about whole body hormones, whole body. local hormones, and then we, individualize, then we individualize sort of your plan. Again, this is not for everybody. We gave you lots of resources. Uh, please follow us on social media because we will keep yelling. We'll keep doing stuff like that. Um, it sounds, oops, see, I didn't end the poll and share the results. So y'all just want to at all right you want everything which is so uh, wonderful um so please reach out to us uh, go to rachelrubinmd.com send us a message or reach out to our clinical coordinator sophia at office at rachelrubinmd.com we'd love to see you in october uh, which would be super fun and just um thank you all for being Thanks here thanks so much today. happy friday if you happy liked Labor it Day post to us on instagram reach out to us tell us what you like we'll send you a little survey and we'll answer all your questions and videos if we can and um enjoy your labor day uh, week of my birthday Birthdays on Thursday. Oh, amazing. So this is wonderful. I'll get you a gluten-free cake. For my, oh, I also need a gluten-free cake on my birthday. All right, y'all. Thanks for being with us. This has just been an absolute joy. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.